pick number nine tonight. And we're talking about the Alfa Romeo seat topic number nine. We're sticking in Formula One here. Like I said, if you're new to the show here, give us a subscribe. Give us a like. This is the coaches special, a short and sweet comeback sports special where we're still covering 10 topics. But give us a like here. Give us a follow or give us a comment or, hey, give us a call and, and leave a voicemail if you want us to talk about a different topic. Maybe on next week's show when the shot caller Pat Flaherty returns to our lineup. But let's talk about Alfa Romeo's lineup in 2022 and who they're looking to slot alongside Valtteri Botas in their car. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of rumors flying around Formula One right now. And, and you can say that silly season is still continuing on when it goes for Alfa Romeo. But the two names that keep coming up and keep rising to the top here in this conversation that might get slotted alongside Valtteri Botas is Guangzhou, the Chinese driver, and then also Nick DeVries. Obviously, you know, the Formula E champion that is potentially looking to make his way to Formula One. So it's just really one of those things where, you know, I think Alfa Romeo has a really tough decision if you have just those two drivers as your final two choices. And rumor has it that, you know, Guangzhou is the real leader for getting that seat, but that he wants to lock himself into a three-year deal with Alfa Romeo. And Alfa Romeo doesn't feel comfortable doing that. Frederick Vassar is really right now just looking to find a replacement driver for one year. And, you know, they're, I'm hearing that they want to bring up Porsche and that Porsche is their number one target to bring into their car for 2023. So if they lock in Guangzhou to a three year deal, it will be a lot harder to bring Porsche in in 2023. So alongside Valtteri Botas and potentially also a Mercedes engine coming in this Alfa Romeo car which is definitely something we have to continue to look at going forward if that becomes true. And I don't know, if that becomes true, I, I think you have a strong argument to say Nick DeVries might belong in that seat, a Mercedes junior driver alongside Valtteri Botas, who we all know can get the best out of a Mercedes engine car. So it's just really one of those things where, man, if I'm Frederick Vassar, I've got a lot of tough decisions to make here over these next few weeks to decide, is it going to be Guangzhou or am I going to look to bring in Nick DeVries? And like I said, that's a real tough decision. But I would be, you know, I'd be hurting myself if I didn't mention another guy that I personally thought should have been in that seat this year. And that's Callum Eilat. I really do believe that Callum Eilat did enough in Formula 2 battling the likes of Mick Schumacher and having himself a great season, almost winning that Formula 2 title. And, you know, I, I know, obviously, Callum Eilat just signed to race in IndyCar, but I think if he had been given the chance to race in Formula 1 in 2021, that Callum Eilat would have been a great pairing with Kimi Raikkonen. And then Callum Eilat would have been a great pairing with Valtteri Bottas going forward. But I know a lot of people will have, you know, their personal opinion on that, and I totally get it. But I also think that you could arguably have a great stance in saying that Guangzhou or Nick DeVries both belong in that car as well. So it's just really one of those things where it's a topic that we will definitely have to be looking at. And once they decide, we will be covering it going forward. Let's move on to our final topic of the night, topic 10. <laughs> 